Well, the Winton weather is turning and the stage is set now for race 11 of the championship with Mark Winterbottom on pole position. So we've had 10 races so far. Jamie Winkup has won five to start the season with. James Courtney, Garth Tander, Rick Kelly, Shane Van Gisberg and Jason Bright, our other race winners. So that's the front of the grid. Winterbottom's first pole since Tasmania last year. Jamie Winkup now nine out of 11 races started on the front row. Stephen Johnson, good qualifier yesterday on the front row, backs it up again today. Garth Tander will start a little bit further up than he did yesterday. Michael Caruso was a bit of a punching bag throughout the race yesterday and Craig Lowndes was the hard luck story. But David Reynolds had even worse luck. Started with his best career qualifier and ended up down in 22nd after the incident at turn one. So a pretty good looking top 10. Four new arrivals in the top 10 today as opposed to yesterday. Lee Holdsworth and Rick Kelly. Lee Holdsworth drops down seven spots on his qualifier from the Saturday race. There's Alex Davison been really pushy this weekend. Fabian Coulthard had to abort his qualifying session, was on track for a good time. And it appears as though they've fixed the problem in that car. Will Davison and Tony Dalberto broke a steering arm during yesterday's race. James Moffat from Jim Bean Racing lines up alongside Todd Kelly from Jack Daniels. Paul Dumbrell for the Bottolo team with our defending series champion, James Courtney in 20th spot. Jonathan Webb and Jason Barguana, Jana Living Racing, make up 21 and 22. There's Dean Fiore from Triple F and Russell Ingle, who's one and only career pole position, came at this circuit 10 years ago. Qualifying hasn't been kind to him today. Steve Owen and Carl Reindler, both involved in that huge crash in WA, now side by side on the start grid here. Warren Luff has changed an engine in that car. And Greg Murphy, excluded out of qualifying for putting the wrong wheels on the car, has been pushed all the way back to position 28. We understand that Warren Luff is more than likely going to be a starter in pit lane. As they set off on the observation lap, a couple of things to tidy up from yesterday's race. It took quite a while to process this information because there were so many things that went on. As you just mentioned, Greg Murphy excluded from qualifying as a result of that little infringement with the wheels. But uh, yesterday, Shane Van Gisbergen crossed the... Uh, oh, sorry, today, Shane Van Gisbergen crossed the blend line, the pit exit for qualifying race 11, so he's got the fine of $1,000. But yesterday, a whole bunch of things to get through. Stephen Johnson, he failed to maintain the prescribed speed when the safety car lights were on. Remember, that was at the start of the race, and there's Warren Luff in the Gulf Western Oils entry in the pit lane. And as a result of slowing down and not maintaining or accelerating, he was pinged 50 championship points. Fabian Coulthard for his move on Michael Caruso, which you saw at the top of our show, 25 points. James Moffat, he got involved in a little bit of aggravation post-race with Tim Slade, fined $5,000 and two and a half of that suspended till the end of the year, so he's had to actually unload a real two and a half in the process. <laughs> Michael Caruso for a similar situation with Fabian Coulthard, it's a little bit of payback going on after the flag, which is frowned upon by race control for obvious reasons. So Michael also 5,000, two and a half suspended till the end of the year. It's a bit long-winded, sorry, folks. And then Gary Rogers Motorsport and Triple Eight for not directing their cars to the podium in the proper briefed manner and sending them through the pit lane at the end of the race. They also uh, got nicked $2,000, but it's suspended at the end of the year. I feel like a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder where I get one at this time of day. <laughs> You've got a gorilla degree, haven't you? Yes. Yeah, Never so got any... Did you go to uni? Or... No. no. That's the rap sheet of uh, yesterday, and this could be the big story. So... It's all coming from the northeast. That's the direction the breeze is pushing it. So we'll be uh, keeping an eye on the weather radar and seeing what's ahead. But you just get that feel, don't you, that it's it's going to rain sooner or later. Well, it's very blustery out there at the moment. The wind's still from the northeast on the ground, but up above, and what's pushing the weather is actually coming from the southwest. So it's a 67-lap race, 200 k's. If you need to leave us at any time, Take your Telstra and XG Mobile with you. Thanks to Big Pond Sport. Great supporters of this category. We'll make sure you don't miss a beat on your Telstra and XG Mobile. Thumbs up and good to go for Warren Luff. The car would not start under its own power, so what they had to do is what we do at home. Just put the jumpers on, fire it up, rev it, and get that battery charged up. He's just proven to officials that he could shut it down and start it up again, and he will start from pit lane. Yeah, and that's the critical part there. He's got to be able to demonstrate to the V8 supercar officials that the car's capable of starting under its own steam. As we saw yesterday, the start is very important here, Matt. First corner, yeah, yeah, always no, drama. 
Well, not just that. I mean, you miss the start here and you create the drama down to turn one. That's effectively what happened yesterday. Craig Lowndes dug a big hole from pole position. By the time he got it restarted, everybody tried to take advantage of that hole, but it shuts down very quickly into turn one. That's what's ahead of them. Murphy, his blood will be boiling. Excluded out of qualifying. What he said was a pathetic decision. Well, he's got 200 k's to make it up from the rear of the grid. But at the front for race 11, Mark Winterbottom taking on the man who is in control of this championship, Jamie Wincup. Behind them, Stephen Johnson and Garth Tander. Caruso and Lowndes ready to pounce as well. Frosty got a good start. It'll be even Stevens down to one. Tander looks racy straight away. Winterbottom cuts in. They rub panels. Winkup just holds on and Winterbottom will shoot away. Jamie tried very hard to stay on the outside at one. It didn't work. And because he had to come out of the throttle so much to stay on the racetrack, it's back the pack up. It's worked nice for Mark Winterbottom. And Winkup barely got away with it, but it was a nice recovery from an awkward situation. Alex Davison. He's wide at turn three, four. It was a difficult moment for Winkup when he got it turned at turn two. He had to cover Garth Tander, who got a great start. So Johnson and Tander got a great start. And the guy who made up for a poor start yesterday is Craig Lowndes. Oh. As Bargwiner has a massive dive on James Moffat at turn seven. Great start for Greg Murphy. He's made a lot of spots. You can see he's five cars up from where he started in last position. It's down. wild in that mid-pack, that congestion back there. Down to turn right, 10. The short, sharp, back straight. Feeds them down to 11. Tanda has put the foot down. Wincup's trying to get the rhythm back. Winterbottom's had a perfect start, a perfect lap one. And around they go. Lowndes looks racy. He's got good... Good car speed on the first lap. It's a good day, particularly with the length of the race, the threat of the weather. I reckon and it's a hard message to get through sometimes, but just going to be a real case of patience. Don't burn up the tyres too early. They've got a long way to go, and a lot of cards will play out with this one. I think Desperado early is very high risk. And as we said yesterday, sometimes to go a little slower at the start of the tyre run, so each of these tyre runs are about 20 laps, for the first couple of laps not to use them up too hard actually has a yield in terms of how long you can can maintain reasonable car speed and reduce the degradation. Yeah. Lowndes at the moment has got a little more speed than Garth, and so he's lining himself up for a lunge. He'll think about it down here, but I expect Tander to cover. He's probably not quite close enough. It's impossible to calculate how many laps these guys would have done around this circuit. The test circuit for the Victorian base teams. Lowndes spent a lifetime down here testing now, of course, the advantage has gone Queensland-based teams with Wing Cup winning yesterday. Up over the rise comes Mark Winterbottom. Uh, Point five of a second lead to Jamie Wing Cup. There's Tander, then Lowndes. And Wing Cup grabs some ground back on that lap to be the fastest man on the racetrack. Great jump, Mark Winterbottom. Beautiful work off the line. Great stoush between the two of them. And I thought Jamie did a great job to hang on here. He couldn't quite make it stick. They rattled. Oh, he actually had to go back a gear. Yeah. He went back a gear and covered to the right, and that's why he lost so much ground initially. Look at Lowndes. He's all over Tander at the moment. <laughs> That'll be so hard. Garth will be getting glimpses of that hot red in the mirror. It'll be here, there, and everywhere. Oh, trouble oh. up at seven. And there's a lot of cars involved in this. There's Davison, oh. Dumbrell, Owen, Ingle, Bargwana, and Todd Kelly. And Todd Kelly is the biggest victim. He's been smashed up there. Safety car's been put into standby mode. Big damage to the front left of Russell Ingalls' car. 
And James Courtney also, as a result, has gone off the circuit down at turn 10. So Here this go. is it. Round up the top. And this is crunch time. Oh! oh. We've seen that over the years. It's just a massive concertina. There's a lot of cars involved in that there. <laughs> Unbelievable. Out comes the safety car. Mark Winterbottom leading Jamie Wink up here at Winston. Okay, safety car, just an update. Uh, that car is cleared. Now we're just doing a minor clear up, and uh, I'm expecting to release you um, into this uh, lap to wait for my confirmation. Thank you, Harry. Light's still on on the Petters safety car. Comprehensive damage list has been left behind. Look at the crumple zone on Will Davison's car. Already James Courtney has come in and gone straight to the garage. This is Jason Barguana's entry. And let's just try and dissect this again. It, because it's not clear in my mind exactly what triggered all this to begin with because we see Will Davison going around and it's because contact with one of the Gary Rogers cars but I don't know why so he was clearly involved in some sort of skirmish and then that just triggered a heap of nonsense it was Holdsworth and uh, look at the damage on the left hand front of the Toll Holden Racing Team Commodore of James Courtney and that's a big story I mean this is a big story here because James Courtney's championship defense is really starting to suffer Over and now. suffer badly because wing cup keeps winning and courtney keeps on ending up in scenarios like this yeah down here with will davo this is going to go in for quite a while it's not just the front bar it's the front yeah, bar mount that's the drama here so that's a timely change uh jason barguan has been in and out a couple of times he now looks okay but the other one we just saw get pushed into the pits was russell lingle that's actually got severe damage to that car and it's leaking water out underneath obviously a radiator failure there so uh be lucky to see him again in the race yeah, James Courtney just down here, bent steering arm, uh, hugely disappointing. Uh, James, this is the last thing you needed. <laughs> yeah, Barrett's needed this like a hole in the head. But it's, uh, 
but when you're in the back, when you're starting in the back and uh, things happen, it's, uh, you know, I couldn't get out of the way of it. It's, uh, yeah, it's just, you know, massively disappointing. So, uh, you know, we'll just uh, get it changed. We'll go out there and try and uh, do a bit of testing, I suppose, and try and get a bit of a heads up. Right. Hard work, mate. All the best. Cheers. And starting to really hurt on the championship table. He's more than 500 points adrift. By the end of the day, it could be even more. So let's go racing again for this restart and see if they can all control themselves. Normally the answer is no, they can't. But Winterbottom leads them through. Wing Cup tucked in second. Garth Tand has been under pressure from the word go from Craig Lount. Stephen Johnson, he is in fifth. Then it's Michael Caruso, David Reynolds, Jason Bright, Tim Slade and Rick Kelly make up our top ten. It's a good restart there for Mark Winterbottom. He got a good run out of the final corner and Jamie Winkup went with him. But what we saw just before the safety car come out was Winkup speed started to just creep up on Winterbottom and we already have seen the lounge speed behind Tanda. So these first four or five laps of the restart will be interesting to see who has genuine car speed at this point of the race. Tight left hand 90 degree corner at turn 10. This has got to be, and it's not done yet, the most well behaved lap after a safety car I think we've seen forever. Yeah, exactly. All single file. Nobody's gone aggro. Nothing silly's happened. They've just completed three Ks without any drama after a safety car. Well, they've used their heads because they know it's a long race. 67 laps around here. We're only a tenth of the way into this race. And with two more pit stops for everybody to make, got to use your brain. Dean Fiore there, up eight spots. Good start for him. Wind Cup's definitely moving up on Winterbottom. Yeah, this is what we saw at the beginning of the race before the safety car intervention. Once all the temps and pressures came up, there was a little swing to Wing Cup in pace. Look at all that work going on at Trading Post Racing. They've got the bar on now. It's time to put the front bumper assembly on with the front wing. Now, Lowndes continues to really chew on the back of Garth Tander at the moment. We, he's still showing that great speed, but uh, Garth is not going to make it easy for him. Really nothing in him. Look at this. There's virtually nothing in the top 10 and keep counting. They've all got a, a watching brief on each other. And in many ways, I think that this attack here from Craig Lowndes on Garth Tander is pushing Tander along, pushing him a little bit closer at times to Jamie Wincup. Russell Engel, the super cheap auto Commodore is a mess. That's the sort of thing that not only breaks your, your heart, but ends your day. Yeah, we'll be whizzing down to the local super cheap store and get some parts tomorrow for her. Um, yeah, just a just a real shame, but as one of uh, one of Paul's sayings goes, you know, you lie with dogs, you get fleas. And unfortunately, qualifying back there, mate, there's a few dogs, and you know, uh, the trouble is, you, I, I don't know where some of the guys are looking. You know, like you can see the accident happening a mile away because I always tend to look ahead. And uh, you could see the accident happening, so I backed out of it. But naturally, 10 others behind, they didn't, still on the on the loud pedal and just pushed us all. Well, that's what happened, just everyone pushed each other into the into the accident. But a bit of a shame. I think Dave got turned around there and, and caused it all. But, uh, yeah, that's life, eh? So um, it just ends a fantastic weekend for us. So it's got to go up from here. <laughs> all the best, Russell. See you in Darwin. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Very if, genuine, wasn't he? That was a very genuine... Yeah, he finished 17th yesterday. It just hasn't gone right from the word go for Russell. But he's been around long enough to know that that's the kind of game he's playing. We may see the fulfilment of some promise shown yesterday by a couple of fellas to Jason Bright. Remember the strategy they played? He was stronger in the back half of the race, but he qualified poorly, so we didn't get to see the ongoing benefit. And David Reynolds is in that boat too. I spoke to him earlier in the day. It was so unfortunate. Mark Scope described earlier in the day how he was the big loser yesterday because he got pushed and shoved and uh, had to come in and get damaged bodywork removed. This is a straight car car we're talking about here and the driver of it. So David Reynolds has been the pick of the Kelly gang cars all weekend. Very quick and it's a good clean start for him so far so he's been able to play himself in and in fact both David 
and Jason a line astern there at the moment with Tim Slade behind. Gee, it's, a, it's an incredibly tight front of this field from a 25-2 Mark Winterbottom down to 10th Rick Kelly at 25-1-4. There's less than a tenth of a second between the hot, all of the top 10 cars. Well, in lap speed terms, I'm looking to 20th Jonathan Webb in the Mother Energy car. He did the same lap time as the blokes at the front of the field. Yeah, unbelievable. And in fact, as they go past our comp box here, it's like a NASCAR race. He's bright up the inside at seven. It's a real thunderous train of cars that are line astern. So Jason makes one positive move forward on David. First move since we've seen the safety car, Larko. Oh, just having a look as Will Davo exits. They haven't been able to get that front bar on correctly. I just saw the air intake not real good, but look at the bits on the ground here. New grill. Uh, here's the little blocker that goes in front of the radiator. New front bar, new front bar mount. Um, all done in about, uh, what, eight minutes. Better than your open panel beater, eh? <laughs> You've had a few of those days, Larko. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> He looked like a shoplifter down there, didn't he? <laughs> See if there's anything he can grab. As an ex-team manager, he's probably looking at how much all that cost. A team owner, I should say. Exactly. How much they this. cost. So Winterbottom has a half a second lead over Wing Cup. Here's the freight train. So Bright's the only mover in the most recent of laps. He's up to seventh, knocking back Reynolds to eighth. Tim Slade's behind him. I love that train of cars. Fifth gear, Jason Richards watching at Team BOC. Don't forget to log on to bitforjace.com. Try and support Jace and his family through this difficult time. Jace is a Telstra ambassador as well. It's great to see him back. He's been racing in the support categories. That's his. Uh, that's his release. He says he drove really well. He, he did. Yeah. He, he actually got to third spot and he uh, he drove really well in the Ferrari. And together with a, a bunch of other guys, including yourself, uh, he had to run in the two practice sessions, first two practice sessions on Friday that included those drivers that we'll see in the Enduros later in the year. Bitforjace.com is the address. And the winners so far in this race, in terms of guys starting back, Greg Murphy has gained 12 positions and Dean Fiore, eight positions. You get that feeling something's going to happen soon, either on the track or from the skies.
on lap 12 here at Winton. Jamie Wincup has made his move on Mark Winterbottom. Frosty has led this freight train from the start of the race. Wincup has been hounding and hounding and down at turn three. He comes over the rise, slots on the inside, clinical move. And Winterbottom played it well. On a 67 lap race, there's no point flying into an argument, but he's under attack twice. Same spot, same result, Tanda goes through. Winterbottom's having trouble making the direction change at one and two. Doesn't look like the cars are strong across the curbing there as those that he's racing. And as a result, he struggles to get up the hill at turn two where the road tapers away from you there, Mark. I think the other thing, interesting thing's going to play out here, Neil, is what this does to our pit window. I mean, we talked about that 18-20 type number. We've had that early safety car. What that does, the tyres got hot, they get a little breather, they cool down, and it's a bit like baking a cake. So you'll get a little bit more durability. So you may see that just push back a couple of laps. The bake, can you explain the baking the cake bit to have me? You, have you ever had a cake know. that Larko's baked? No, I haven't. Would no. you? No, no, I wouldn't. <laughs> well, the biggest question now is, Will Craig Lowndes try exactly the same as his teammate and Garth Tander have done up at turn three on Winterbottom? Campbell Little and Co. No wonder they're starting to look concerned. So this is the view from out the rear of Mark's car, Mark Winterbottom's that is, up over the rise towards turn three. He darts off. And that's the point that Neil was making. You can see Garth used the kerb on the left at turn one. And then on the change direction, he had better mid-corner speed and he got up the inside into turn three. This is a great shot so behind if, the cars. And let's see if Lowndes does the same. Is he close enough? That's the first critical point. Probably not. Lowndes will tuck in behind him that time. The fascinating aspect of a really close competition of this nature is that it only takes a couple of extra kilometres an hour in the corner exit speed to extrapolate at the end of the next straight into something you can work with. So Garth, if you were able to compare the data, download out of both cars, we all sat around and had a look at it now, he might have come off that corner two, three, maybe four k's quicker, oh. but he gets a bit at the other end. He's Bright on the move again. This time it's Caruso. Takes a few with him. Up to sixth, Jason Bright. Slade in here as well. David Reynolds is drifting a bit. Rick Kelly's going to put a move on him at nine. David's in a bad spot out there. Although, if he can hold his ground, at least he's on the inside for the left-hander at 10 when Coulthard will have a crack. So he lost two spots, Dave Reynolds, to Tim Slade and to his teammate Rick Kelly in that little exchange at turn seven, eight and nine. And Jason Bright has done a very good job. That's a, a nice pass on Caruso at turn seven. He put the same manoeuvre on Dave Reynolds a couple of laps ago. And he's, again, showing good race speed. He's talking to Campbell Little, the technical director down here at Ford Performance Racing, as Mark Winterbottom continues to come under attack from Craig Lowndes. Uh, he hasn't actually said anything on the radio, but uh, like your observation, Neil, it does look to them also, he's struggling to get to the middle of the corner, getting the car pointed in where he wants it to be. And if you don't get it pointed in at that phase, that then takes a toll on the rear tyres on the way out of the corner. So it could be in a little bit of trouble. All right, so Wing Cup now has a half a second lead over Tander. Winner bottom drops back to third. Survive or be attacked here at Winton.
Fujitsu GRM have now processed both of their cars. Michael Caruso following Lee Holdsworth through pit lane, but out in front, on lap 17 out of 67, Jamie Wincup and Garth Tander are staging a bit of a match race on their own. They've pulled away from Mark Winterbottom. We'll take a look at Alex Davison, Jonathan Webb and Dean Fiore behind the uh, Davo. They're getting all tangled up at the exit of turn 11. Carl Reindler going off, and so to Dean again. So back to the front, we'll find Wincup and Tanda, as I mentioned, pulling away from Winterbottom and Co. The question is, is Winterbottom slowing the rest down, or has Wincup and Tanda just got the, the better advantage in terms of pace and track position? Dean Fiore had steering damage on that car as he decided to peel off then. It's all a bit willing at the back of the pack there. This is Ryan. Remember the awful incident in Western Australia several weeks ago, and the damage that he sustained in that. It's amazing that he's even back in the car. It's an old car that they've built up. He's got another one coming. He'll have three different chassis in three races. This is David Reynolds who's been drifting a little. So another tyre set on. I don't know whether they made any other adjustments to that car to tidy it up. Oh, oh here he is go. again. Gee, Bright's got pace, hasn't he? Big attack on Stephen Johnson at turn seven. Well, that's where he's picking them off. So Jason Bright. Oh, he's going to have a little dive up the inside <laughs> then too. Now, Richard Holway, engineer for Lee Holdsworth, has been just counselling. Remember, they plucked him in early. Did he stop? Put another tyre set on. He's kind of out of sequence with others. But Richard was on the phone then saying, no wheel spin. He wants to get the maximum performance lap by lap out of these tyres, but extend their life and he will jump a few. But the interesting thing is the no wheel spin remark is about throttle control and not hurting the rear tyre. But there were a lot of guys in the field yesterday that actually wore the front tyre out also. Because the technique that you use on this soft tyre is you turn the car in early and you run the car in to try to keep the momentum up and to not blow the rear tyre early. So what actually happened is that some of the faster guys found that the front tyre was more of the problem as the race went on than the rear tyre, which would be one of the first times in the history of this sport. All that stuff you can see on the front left tyre there is what we describe as pickup or marbles when it's on the racetrack. So pieces of rubber being flicked up in a much longer race today. It'll be a bigger factor. Shane Van Gisbergen in. Those tyres are roaded. You see how they've had a little run there, which is a good way of curing them, which is a little bit of the Mark Larkin bake the cake scenario that once they've had a a heat cycle and they cure then effectively the tire becomes harder and they're more durable so a second run on the tire is usually beneficial this is extraordinary what's going on at the front of the field then back to this pack that we're seeing these guys are six seconds behind second place so there's six seconds from Garth Tander back to Mark Winterbottom and of course Jamie Winkup's about well, seven tenths of a second ahead of ahead of Tander so Wink up and Tanda racing away at this stage of the race and the other guys are struggling to catch. 
That's a great job. Greg Murphy was just in 10th, actually. He just lost a spot to Alex Davison. So he went from 28th to 10th in 18 laps. So he's going 18 positions, and then he comes into the pits for fresh tyres. So he was 10th on the previous lap as Rick Kelly gives Tim Slade a little <laughs> hurry along. And Jamie Winkup in from the lead. Our leader. And uh, I speculated earlier about whether David Reynolds and his crew made a change to the rear roll centre on that car. They did, and I understand he raised it, so he'd be looking for more turn in that car at the front. Brad looks good. Brad's done, first year. Nothing really going on here, mate. Front's done, just waiting on fuel. Good to go, good to go, still clear. Get him done. That's where they won it yesterday, on the way in, during their stop in pit lane, and then on the way out again. So, Rick Kelly just uh, passed Tim Slade in pit lane just then. You can see Slade, and I, I don't know whether he ended up getting out in between Murphy and Rick Kelly, so we'll follow that one for you. So, Tander leads from Winterbottom, Lowndes, Johnson and Bright as the stops start. Jamie Wincup coming in from the lead and stopped on lap 19. So he's basically broken the laps up as Mark Larkham suggested. When he did the little rundown of how the strategy of this race would work, it's basically three lots of 20 laps as the way to make the tyres live best over this period of time. Now remember, the guys that we're looking at on screen here, including Jamie, who's just stopped for very fresh tyres, the two immediately behind, they've stopped as well. So they're actually genuinely in position here. So they're on the same sequence having a couple of laps between them. But having done their first stop, uh, that has paid dividends for Gary Rogers Motorsport. But their tyres will taper earlier than the guy that we're with at the moment. And uh, they'll degrade a little. Well, it's only three laps, wasn't That's it? Right. So, yeah. But what you're saying is by coming in early, they've got a real yield. Clear they've got a gain. Clear track. Yep. Yep. You'll be nearly done. Go, 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 go. Gee, he just got that away, then it almost stalled. Bobbled, didn't it? There's Steve Johnson right behind. So Steve's actually made a little gain on Winterbottom. And we'll just follow that for you. So, yes, so there's Tim Slade. He was in pit lane coming out behind Rick Kelly and Greg Murphy. And he is now four cars back from where we thought he was going to come out. So he's up the inside. This is a pretty important pass for Tim Slade at turn three if gets an opportunity to get down the inside of steve johnson you consider that very many heartbeats ago you had win cup and winner bottom exchanging uh, paint effectively for the lead of the race now you've got uh, win cup on the run to turn nine and uh, winner bottoms up at turn seven so there's an enormous number of meters between those cars now garth tander has uh, entered pit lane which means jason bright is the leader of the race yet to pit? Uh, you're going on the used tyres again. Just to come down the lane now. Go, go when it drops. I'm interested why go, you would go, run go. so long yep, now with this, going. because you're in the late 26s. And the guys that go out are, in, are doing 24s. So in two or three laps difference, there's six seconds in that. Well, I was wondering why he wouldn't follow Win Cup in. That's who, that's who he is playing the game with. We're, we're at that critical moment that Mark Larkin explained on the whiteboard where you extend much beyond about lap 20 we're seeing big tire and, and there's the difference there's yeah. the difference for garth tander the two fujitsu cars have now got themselves in between him and winka yeah so that was the mark i made a little earlier that they've genuinely played in here so therefore position i said to mark scape in one of the breaks that richard holway formerly mark's engineer as we look at jason bright down the inside here of craig lounds it's a good move. It's going to play him further up, but it's actually better than I thought. He's done a, they've got a bigger yield than I thought they'd get. Well, Neil, the other thing that comes into play there, apart from the clear track that you talk about, you've always got to remember the guy that goes out on his green tyres first, runs around for three or four laps, gets that sort of second and half a lap advantage before the next guy comes in, and that always buys you track position. Now, if you can do that twice in this race, you continue to buy yourself track position. Yes, you give away a little bit at the end, but because this is Winton, I repeat again, you know, you, you can defend here for five or six laps at the end. I think it's a good move. Yeah, no doubt. Like, uh, we've, we've been saying exactly the same thing, and uh, this, as you can see, these two Gary Rogers cars have jumped up the field markedly. Big battle there with Fabian Coulthard 
on Craig Lowndes. And he did the same thing yesterday, the little hip and shoulder on Dumbrell. And he didn't, there was no penalty for that, was there? No. No, the only penalty that he got was from the turn three. Here's Lowndes in for his stop now. Remember, he was involved in that messy situation that you just described at turn 12. So just to explain the difference between Wind Cup and the two Fujitsu cars, Wind Cup in on lap 19 for his fuel and tyres, and 33 and 34 Holdsworth and Caruso in 15 and 16. So Leon on 15, Michael in on 16. The only thing that this does a little bit is it does give you a year of later. That's what I was... Yeah. You, yeah. So we're on the same. We're on the same path. We'll finish the sentence for me, thank you. <laughs> so, <laughs> like an old married couple, there'll be effectively less stop time later in the race as this unfolds. And what it does a little bit is it puts you in the hands of a safety car at some stage. So, if at any point you can have the gap closed by the safety car coming out, then all this first part of the race strategy doesn't mean a lot until you get to the last piece, which is as we call the critical lap number, is how many laps can you do at the end with a minimal stop time? And Scafe, isn't the best thing about all this, mate, the fact that we're having this conjecture because you just can't pick it? And that's the great thing. Yeah, that's right, Larko. And, and, you know, we saw strategy yesterday play a big part of the result with Jamie Winkup. And again today, we've seen quite diverse strategy between the top guys. So Jason Bright, for instance, going very, very well. He's still out there. This is the 24th lap. Jonathan Webb, the winner of the Sydney Telstra 500 last year in the Mother Energy car. He was involved in a little messy episode back at Turn 11 about 10 laps ago, but he seems to have recovered from that. At the moment he's 18. He's made a stop. Make that 17. He's actually tagging along quite strongly there with Lowndes at the moment. So we'll keep an eye on Bright speed here. And uh, what Bright and... Fabian Coulthard are doing is uh, much more of an even spread of load across their tyre sets. Now, in fact, Coulthard comes in in the Bundy entry. So that leaves only Jason Bright and Steve Owen, who, unfortunately for Steve, he was also involved in that mess up at turn seven on lap three. He had to come to a complete stop up there in the VIP Pet Foods entry. So 26.35 for Bright. That's actually a pretty smart lap time for as much work as those tyres have done. We'll give you, say, Jamie Winkup very shortly as to what sort of speed the people that have stopped will be able to achieve. Well, the last couple of laps around, I was keeping my eyes on it, Scafe. Winkup was, his times were being matched by Caruso and Holdsworth. There's only three laps difference in terms of uh, tyres. Lee and Michael came in three laps earlier, so 125.6 that time for Jamie Wincup, 125.54, 125.58 for Caruso and Holdsworth, respectively. So nothing in it there, and Garth Tander has joined this little battle group. And that was a big dive, Matt. He had a large lunge at turn three and almost tagged the back of Holdsworth's car on entry to turn three. Do you see what I see now? Is that what you're looking at, the, the clouds? Yeah, I'm yeah. just looking off in the, in the distance. Uh -oh. Here we go, you don't need to look too far though for action at the moment because Tanda's right in the thick of it. So Gar Tanda slots in between the two Fujitsu cars. Remember before the pit stops, it was effectively, it was Wing Cup first, Tanda second. And by coming in just a couple of laps outside of Jamie Winkup's stop schedule, Garth Tander found himself behind the two Fujitsu cars. Here's Jason Bright. This will be interesting to see where he rejoins the race. The leaders are coming around turn 11. They're angling now towards turn 12. Puts them on the front straight, which means Bright will leave pit lane. So that's the first four have gone past. There's a shot of the weather there in the background that I was making reference to. So that has not served Jason Bright no. well. No. Not in this first phase of the race. As I said, things do change. Now Bright comes out of pit lane. He'll appear on this shot very soon. There he is. There he is. And that's going to put him in uh, 
14th position. Yeah. He was down the inside of Jonathan Webb. And so all that hard work that he did in the early stage of the race didn't pay off. But again, you'll see some yield at the back end. At the bottom end of this fuel load. This is, yeah, this is, I thought he was, well, sorry, this was actually just last lap, as in now. The previous lap he had a semi-dive at Holdsworth, so he's grabbed second position down the inside of Caruso, and he looks speedy. He's right up onto the back of Jamie Winkup. This is effectively the lead of this race. That took five laps for Garth Tander to get his position back. Five laps and two attacks at the teammates Holdsworth and Caruso. An enthralling battle is developing here between Jamie Wincup and Garth Tander at the front of this field with 40 laps left to go in this race. Tander has good pace and he is making his intentions very clear. Just think about this, five Bathurst titles and three overall championships between them. And Tander's already had a couple of looks before the pit stop shuffle, these guys were pulling away from the rest of the field. They're doing it again. But the difference this time around is, and this is where Garth will go again, down at turn three. The difference this time around is Tander has the pace to attack Wing Cup, and he's showing it. Something else at play here. Overall in their careers, Garth Tander has won 48 races. By winning yesterday, Jamie Wing Cup has now won 47 races. <laughs> There's a lot to defend. And if Garth wins today, he'll overtake Peter Brock on the all-time list. If Jamie wins today, he'll go equal on that list with Brock Tander and himself, of course. So there's a lot at stake. Two very, very good drivers. Two of the very best of, of the modern era, no doubt about it. Wing Cup, our championship leader. 
He's been in control, won 50% of the races this year. Garth Tander already has a race win. He won the Saturday event at Eclipse 500. And it's been a great turnaround for the West Australian from the start of the year where it started so poorly in Abu Dhabi. He's managed to fight his way back into championship contention. Let's not forget Caruso and Holdsworth. Played a good card early and now they're inside the top five. Fifth spot belongs to Shane Van Gisbergen. So his strategy's played out well, stopping on lap 18. As you said, Matt, these two guys are right at the top of their game. And around this circuit, it's such a complex track that there's, look at that dark background, and there's a lot of debris out of the back of the Vodafone car there. It's, it's actually had a broken piece in behind the fuel tank, which is the same sort of area that we saw Dave Reynolds damage yesterday. And uh, you can see it's had a hit there before the Vodafone sign on the rear bumper. These guys are operating at a very high level. This is a very intense race. And what they've got to do is, whilst they're racing each other, conserve the tyre. And look at the way both of them are squaring the back of the corner off, meaning they try to drive the car as straight as you possibly can, spread the load on the rear tyres as evenly as possible, and drive the cars to the maximum grip threshold as fast as you can drive them without having or with minimal wheel spin is the key. You can just see Tander in a couple of spots has got good, good, he's got good car speed in comparison, but in other spots, wink up slightly better. This is the area that Garth's been very good out of turn two. This will be now, if he can get through this change of direction, which is what Neil was saying earlier, this way, now to the right, this is where Tander's been strong. Not quite close enough this time. Oh, looking though, he's looking, he's far enough up to be a nuisance. He's got, got him. Gets him down to turn four, so Garth Tander takes the race lead. Isn't it strange the way we've seen several times this year where the Toll Holden racing team has come on big time on the Sunday, but it's, it's taken too long on the Friday or the Saturday to be able to get all the ducks in a row to achieve the result that they're looking for. Here it is again in replay. This is turn two where he showed his nose. They both managed to race without awkward contact and then eventually Garth had the line then for turn four. Nice job. And the other guys haven't fallen away very far either. So the Gary Rogers cars, we often say Gary's not here this weekend. We wish him all the best. Is that his daughter's 21st and we always say that they punch above their weight. As a, a relatively small team, they do a very, very good job and Michael Caruso and Lee Holdsworth in a strong position. 30 laps into 67. If you're interested to see what uh, Shane Van Gisbergen has up his sleeve, he started from ninth, he's in fifth, and he's ever so slightly, there he is, creeping towards the rear of Lee Holdsworth, and therefore joining the, the front battle pack. Well, Caruso headed up a couple of the practice sessions on Friday, mm, it's good. and uh, clearly as one of the Victorian teams, they come up here and test, and we've seen evidence of good speed. In fact, we've seen some very good speed from both Lee and Michael here, not just this year, but in years gone by as well. So it's really no surprise that they've got pace. Murphy's march forward continues to be impressive. Seventh after being shuffled all the way down the back of the order as a result of that wheel infringement. Now 22 years of age, Shane Van Gisbergen, race winner in the series after taking the Sunday event at Hamilton in New Zealand. Yeah, Neil, you just mentioned Greg Murphy. I think his team are thinking about messing up his wheels a bit more often to fire him up and get a result <laughs> like that. That's an incredible charge up to seventh. <laughs> Certainly is, Brett. I mean, he's, he's just in this little pack behind Dave Reynolds, which was the car in front of, of Dave is Shane Van, Van Gisbergen. So we've actually seen a real charge here from Greg Murphy from 28th to seventh position. And this field, I can tell you right now, that is something that he'd be very proud of. Barry Ryan there on the radio, on your right of screen. I went to clarify with Barry earlier about the whole wheel situation. And th there was no mucking around with the language. He said, look, it's our mistake. Just got it wrong. Just an oversight, one of those things that happened. So there was no emotion. There was no 
Tad oh. all slate down the inside at one. Did he get away with it? No. <laughs> <laughs> that was no. Hang on, Stevie Johnson. <laughs> One, two, three, abreast at turn three. <laughs> Good move, Steve Johnson. <laughs> Tanda has the lead. Now about halfway through this event at Winton. Well, the conditions are certainly changing both on the track and in the sky because there's a whole lot of debris on the circuit as the tyres start to break up and the weather continues to come our way. We're the big blue dot, smack bang in the middle, but you can see that there's some nasty stuff coming from the north-west. And Garth Tander continues to hold off Jamie Wincup. You'll see around the track there, look at the marbles around the track, big chunks of rubber that are being spread far and wide. I noticed them down at uh, turn three. Yeah, they're bad there, aren't they? So Tander leads from Wink Cup, Caruso, Holdsworth, Van Gisbergen has just been sneaking up to the back of the uh, Valvoline cars. And Greg Murphy, last lap, just got by his teammate, Dave Reynolds. So sixth position for Greg Murphy. Let's see, well, we're going to penalise him each weekend. Well, it'll be one of the all-time great storm through the field sessions. He one here in 2001, back in the Kmart days. If you could get a victory here today, it'd be one for the books, no question. That's all that rubber I'm talking about. It's everywhere. And we're beginning to get into the phase now for, look at that. Yeah, the build up out there is extraordinary. I went out and had a look in the break at just what it looks like. I mean, there's a lot of it. Offline, you'd be in real strife if you tried to make a move. Here we go, Van Gisberg and down the inside of Holdsworth. Good move. That's for fourth. Remember Lee come in very early, so... Yeah, he... 15 for Lee. 
So those tyres have now gone to the north side of the 20 odd lap window that Mark Larkin pointed out earlier. So they'll drop off. It was lap 18 for uh, Shane Van Gisbergen. And Jason Bright tucked in behind Tim Slade. David Reynolds is at the front of that queue. And Greg Murphy's charge continues. He's lapping faster than the guys who are one and two on the track, Tander and Winkup. He is on the last lap. Well, actually, even on this lap, up to the second intermediate, he's two and a half tenths faster than Tander. We'll give you some lap times. 26.8 for Tander, 26.85 for Winkup, 27.1 for Caruso, 27.2 for Van Gisbergen, and Murphy a 26.64. So he's the fastest car of the top six competitors. Down here with Richard Holway, uh, Lee Holdsworth engineer. Richard, you're one of the teams that come in early. I reckon it looked like a good move. Tell us the logic behind that one. Mate, it's just to get clear track just so you can run your own pace, look after your rubber. So we did it last year and paid off, so done it again. I notice you're having a good hard look at the weather though, mate. Yeah, well, we can't make it now to the weather if, if it comes late. We'll, we're, we've got to come in. And also, we're right behind Robbo, so we're really vulnerable now. We've got to probably get him pretty soon. All right, thanks for the heads up. Now, I want to just quickly run right up here because that strategy coming in early is going to work, but we saw Craig Lowndes, he actually came in quite late, which I thought was a bit unusual, so we'll just see if we can barge in here. Hey, Jeremy, this is Craig Lowndes, engineer. We noticed you came in quite late or later than most. Obviously, you know, shorter second fuel stop, maybe you're going to have a charge at the end, maybe all of the above, maybe waiting for the weather, mate. Which one? Oh, I think either or. I think uh, we're just trying to stay clear, look after our tyres. Yesterday we struggled a bit, so we just need to make sure we get into the race deep enough so that we can have a, a fighting car at the end. So we can see that typical Craig Lounge charge that we love. Exactly, that's it. Good on you, Jerry. Well done. <laughs> well done, Larko. That's the difference in the way the teams go about it, and that strategy always is so important as we see Bright. This is really and ugly. Kelly and Reynolds and Re Lounge. Really ugly because they've been waiting to have a crack at Rick Kelly, but he's still managing to hold his position. This could still be ugly, man. That's Tim Slade down the inside of Fabian Coulthard. And that's Reynolds with a big slide. Now Coulthard back down the inside. Rick Kelly battling to stop. Jason Bright almost fires into the back of the Jack Daniels Commodore. And Craig Lowndes right in the middle of this angry group. Stephen Johnson made a really good play a lap and a half ago. He got out of that. He got way out of that battle pack and left them behind. He looped around Rick Kelly and look what he's left behind. All this craziness behind him. Reynolds, Rick Kelly, oh. Jason Bright, Craig Lowndes, Fabian Coulthard, Tim Slade wants to sit back for a sec. This has got trouble written all over it. Cars at different levels of performance, different phases of the race for them depending on their strategy and very tightly bunched. It's seven or eight cars. And the pole sitter, there's the pole sitter, Mark Winterbottom, right down the back of their 14th and stuck in this pack. So track position is so important. And today, after the first lot of stops, Winterbottom has now got to contend with this group of cars, which might be helping his result. Bright trying to crisscross here. But, uh, David Reynolds now peeling in, so that's one out of that group. Probably not a bad idea just to be away from all yeah. that. <laughs> Step aside. The white flag out. <laughs> well, you know it's only going to end in tears, Barrett. Hey, Matty, you guys were talking earlier about the amount of rubber on the track. This is the amount of rubber oh. off the tyres which is flung up on Lee Holdsworth's car yesterday. It is three kilograms of rubber which Lee was carrying around in race 10, as were all the other cars and they're carrying at the moment. That's the amount of soft, co soft compound rubber that's coming off the tyres yeah. and collecting in the wheel arches. So bright now to eighth while we were watching you then, Barretts, and here comes Coulthard for a look at the da Jack Daniels car as well. Well, Rick was the marked man in that group. I mean, David Reynolds was holding them off and they were all lining up to take a shot at Rick. As I mentioned, Junior already got around him. Oh. Jason Bright's now gone around him. Fabian Coulthard's next in the list. But it won't be easy. Not just for the fact that you've got to try and get past Rick Kelly, but for the guys lining up behind you, putting all that pressure on. Greg, Greg Murphy. He's just past Lee Holdsworth. Oh. So he's up to fifth, fifth from 28. This is fantastic. Here's another little look at turn one as they climb the kerb. 
And big slide on the exit. This is Jason Bright up the inside of Rick Kelly. Out of turn two, we've seen a lot of overtaking in this spot. Look how sideways Rick was. He moved across a little bit, but he, he's also been caught one out and one wide because Fabian Coulthard has parked the car on the inside. They have a little bump. And he got away with that one, but Coulthard will be trying to do the same thing he into turn three. He didn't have the tyre condition to defend then, did he? Now Coulthard's going to go up the inside and repeat the move that you saw on the replay. And Lowndes will try that one on too. Remember, Lowndes has got younger tyres than these guys immediately in front by an enormous amount, but enough perhaps. Yeah, Rick so Rick Kelly. Kelly came in, sorry, mate, on 19, lap 19. Fabian Coulthard, had just went past him. His tyres are five laps younger. Craig Lowndes, three laps younger. Yeah, and where that rears its head is at the back end of the tyre life. So a really good battle still raging between Winkup and Tanda. And a really good job, James Moffat, who's come up to 12th position. He's done a really good, sensible drive. He started 17th. He's a good, sensible drive in the middle of this field. Just past Tim Slade. He's right behind Craig Lowndes. It's Paul Dumbrell fires down the inside of Winterbottom for 14th. And James Moffat stopped on lap 21. So uh, those tyres on his car have done a bit of work. This will be good for him in this pack in terms of experience. There he is there, just in behind Lowndes, with Slade behind and Dumbrell and Winterbottom. Now, now Lowndes is going to get Rick Kelly here at one. He lined him up coming off the final corner, so Rick's tyre condition for the corner exit is obviously quite poor now. James gets a run on Rick Kelly. And gets down the inside. You've got to make this one stick now. A little bump. He'll be on the inside for the next corner. And he gets it done. Good job. And Rick will try and cover, but there's nothing he can do. He's just displaced then. That's allowed Tim Slade to grab the spot into 12. And in terms of tyre life, now you've got Rick Kelly and Tim Slade on the equal set of tyres. They both came in on lap 19. So all the guys that have just gone around Rick Kelly had fresher tyres than him. Up in front. 0.4 of a second is the gap between Tander and Winkup. Michael Caruso is third. Shane Van Gisbergen is fourth. The man who started last, 28th on the grid, Greg Murphy is now fifth. Then it's Stephen Johnson, Jason Bright, Lee Holdsworth, Fabian Coulthard and Craig Lowndes for our top ten. So one of the Fujitsu cars coming into the pit. I think it was Michael Caruso. Yep. So the next phase, this is now a very important part of this race. We've seen strategy already play out, but the last part of this race will be car speed and how young your tyres are in the, the last close, stage. closing stages. This, this is the time that matters. So 42 of 67 laps, and the first ones to blink are GRM. And that's, that's a pretty big ask of this incoming tyre set understand also that the weather could be a factor here so they got 26 laps on that set yep. and there's 26 laps to go see bright with good good speed again also coming up onto the back of johnson a little bump there at turn seven they're still alongside each other so this is not over he'll try to get around the outside and he does good job now on the inside for turn nine Steve will try to crisscross, but Bright gets a good exit. So nice manoeuvre there. Jason Bright puts him into fifth position. So again, we've got all these stops about to unfold. Oh, and a big slide. Rear lock. Lee Holdsworth and uh, Fabian Coulthard banging heads at turn 10. And uh, five laps younger the tyres on Jason Bright's car when we saw him pull that move a few moments ago. And, and in for Lee. So uh, they've got a big job to do now to try and nurse the rubber to get them to the end by virtue of the, the earlier strategy that they've adopted. Sorry, boys, I don't know if you can see there's a, a lot of tyre smoke down there at the pit lane. Entry looks like there's been a kerfuffle down there. But Craig Lambs just came in and out of the pit, put field up and put tyres on. We just talked about he was going to do that at the other end of the race, but he was being held up in traffic, and it goes to show how critical that is. If you've got a car in front of you holding you up a second a lap for multiple laps, you've got to get out of it. He's and he did. 
a long way down at the moment. He's uh, dropped back in 22nd, Larko. So track position is so important. We've been talking about it the whole time. And Whoa. have a look at the debris coming off yeah, and this is Umbrell's car. This is either what we describe as pick up on the tyre or it's accumulated in the inner guards or even inside the wheel rims. And Paul Dumbrell here smoking him up at final corner. I don't know who he got sure caught up with there. The result, that one. The result is he rotates. Oh, yeah, there we no. go. He's rotated with a assistance. It was one of the Jack Daniels cars coming into pit lane. I think it was Rick. Yeah. Oh, Here look we at go. this. This is on. <laughs> two of the top teams in the country, two of the best drivers, nose to tail, bumping him down pit lane. This is fantastic. And if it's either of the cars is programmed a gazillionth of a kilometre an hour, either way, they'll rattle on each other. Now let's see what happens here. Tanda had the lead going in. Rotor tyres. And now as you warble down pit lane at 40 k's, feels unbelievably slow when you're trying to jump this guy. Rotor tyres also. The wind come. It's going to be tight. Gets out. Gets out. Great stop. Well done. Comes in behind HRT and out in front. It's very important. And this is now, this is the battle for the lead effectively. And uh, watch this because the lead will possibly change here. And uh, Caruso climbing all over Wind Cup. And Jamie knows how important it is to make sure that he stays in the way. Bit of biffo. What about the line that Jamie Wincup took through turn three there? Well, totally defensive line. He knew it because he's on cold tyres. And, and he knows that if he can just hang on for the best part of three kilometres, that he's got a tonne and a half on his side to use. But if he ends up the other way round, he'll spend an awfully long time trying to battle with Michael to resolve track position. And for the second time for Garth Tander, a trip through pit lane has been a little bit costly. He's lost the race lead there and found himself again behind a Fujitsu car on exit. Exactly, Matt. So if you think that Wink Cup and Tander have been battling for the lead all day, and now they've come in to make that crucial stop in this race, Tander drops two spots and goes back behind the GRM car of Michael Caruso. So vital. Oh, oh don't have a pit slow. stop drama now. Right rear on Greg Murphy's car was tardy then. You just hope they've still got on the fuel. Oh. They were too tight. Left side. Uh, so the tyres have taken a lot longer than the fuel did, so that won't be... He won't be happy about that, and I think those tyres look like they're new. We'll find that out for you. They look like they were new tyres that went on. So in terms of durability, again, I made the point before that rotor tyres will live better than a brand new green tyre. There's this. Tanner down the inside of Caruso at turn three to get back to second position. Brand new tyres on Garth's car, used them to advantage. Michael's done a couple of extra laps on his. Came in on lap 41. Wow, it's shaping up as a ripper. We're fueling them up to the chequered flag. And the real question here, there's two of them. What about the weather? And how about tyre longevity?
At this stage of the race, it's hard to know which way to look. Pit lane is a buzz. Race control on the lookout for the weather. The on-track action is starting to get really interesting. Now, Bright's in from the race lead. Again, has extended a long way into the race so that he's going to have uh, a set of tyres that are pretty young when you get to the crucial end of the race. And Alex Davison in too together with Steve Owen. And that means Fabian Coulthard is the only one out there yet to uh, complete his final stop, which will cleanse the field and put Jamie Winkup back in the lead of this race. And when you think about it, the battle between Winkup and Tander, both on the track and in pit lane, it's really seesawed. So Bright's dropped in behind Van Gisbergen to check this out. So this was their stops. Tander on the left, Wink Up on the right. Tander came in first. Wink Up released while Tander is still on the jacks. Whoop! Bright's back in the action. That was a bit awkward. Now we need to watch Bright at the end of this tyre stint, but he just gave away a little bit of track space then. He didn't need that because he dropped in behind Van Gisbergen. Now all of a sudden he finds himself behind the Fujitsu car and the Pepsi Max car. You know, you spend too much time then That's trying right. to clear yourself, but he'll be strong. He's got a pretty, sh well, in relative terms, short stint to do on this tyre set. One of the uh, the big winners out of the last round of pit stops as Fabian Coulthard heads towards pit lane, which will mean Jamie Winkup goes to the on-track lead. One of the biggest winners has been Craig Lowndes. He's back inside what will now be fourth position. So it'll be Winkup, Tander, Caruso, then Lowndes, Van Gisbergen, Greg Murphy, Lee Holdsworth and Jason Bright. Oh, this is close. There might be some ugliness here. Coppo. We're not very far away from seeing a bit of weather action here too. I reckon it's just got that look and feel about it out there. So Bright, up on the outside at one with Holdsworth. It has got that feel. Johnson's the one that's got the watching brief in the Jim Bean car. There he is. Now Jason reclaims one of the spots that he lost when he first came out on the cold tyre. Well, that's up to seventh. You, so, just, you just mentioned Stephen Johnson. He's uh, tucked in now behind Lee Holdsworth, who you're riding with. It has been that kind of day for Junior, a watching brief day. And nothing really to speak of except for the fact that he's kept his uh, act together inside the top ten. So by comparison, you've got Wincup and Tander who lead the race at the moment. They came in on lap 43. Jason Bright, we've been speculating on what it might mean for him. He came in on lap 47. Will the four laps make a difference? Now, Jonathan Webb just hovering outside the top 10 at the moment. 12th behind James Moffat in front of Rick Kelly. Winner of the Fujitsu Series in 2009 and winner, as you've already mentioned, Compo, the uh, Telstra 500 at Homebush. That was a really good drive in the wet for Jonathan Webb. So Winkup, Tander, Caruso, Lowndes, Van Gisbergen, Murphy, Bright, Holdsworth, Johnson and Dave Reynolds make up your top ten. James Moffat and Jonathan Webb are 11th and 12th. That time around, Scafie Craig Lowndes has done the fastest time, 124.86. Everyone else in the 125s, if not 126. It's uh, not pretty. 
time. So that's uh, at turn three. So at the moment, the weather's sort of missed us, Matt. It <laughs> looks ugly and dark over there. <laughs> See those marbles on the outside of the sweeper. So Bright's cleared himself now, again, of uh, Murphy and Holdsworth. Took a couple of laps to do, like we suggested. So next in his sights is Shane Van Gisbergen, and Shane stopped on lap 44. There's only three laps difference in when they came in and put tyres on now. This is the battle for the lead. On the computer, last lap through, it was officially half a second. Alex yeah. Davidson, uh, boys, reporting a, uh, an electrical problem, a voltage problem. So they've given him the option to turn off his cool suit, which has uh, obviously got a pump on it, or his cooling fan uh, to, uh, you know, hard decision to make, fan or cool suit. Neil, remember the days when we used to drive, mate, you have an option of turning off your headlights or a pump or something? <laughs> I know you slot the, 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 the cassette player on. <laughs> what? You're a clown. Uh, I got a message through from the Stone Brothers garage earlier that the alternator was faulty on that car, so that's a that's a little drama for them. So can Tander catch Win Cup? Whose tyres will go the distance the best? We're going to find out here at Winton. Almost everybody here at Winton is looking towards those nasty grey clouds. During the break, Scafie and I just had a quick look outside. I'm no weatherman, Scafie, but you and I are both scared. And that's why the wets are being lined up in pit lane. So let's run you through what's happened so far in this race. Mark Winterbottom started from pole position and did a really good job off the start line against Jamie Wincup. Stephen Johnson tucked in third, but from the get-go, Garth Tander announced that he had pace in his car and it didn't take long for him to use it. This is a big, big incident up at turn seven.
Rick Kelly suffered, Russell Ingle suffered, so rather Todd Kelly suffered, Russell Ingle, Jason Barguana, Will Davison, they're all part of it. Wing Cup was the first to line up Winterbottom at turn three. Didn't take long before Tanda did that as well. And from then on, that stage of the race became Tanda v Wind Cup. They raced away from the field and then Tanda had a good look, a really long look at three. This is where all the action's gone down. And he finally delivered. That would change later on a couple of times, in fact. Paul Dumbrell, big spin down in between turns 11 and 12. And this was the critical moment. While Garth Tander was processed for his second stop, so too was Wincup. Now, Garth came in ahead of Jamie Wincup. Wincup came out ahead of Garth Tander. And the Fujitsu car of Michael Caruso has been in play all day. So at this stage of the race, the scenario is this. Oh, it's Tim Edwards. Oh. Don't look left, Tim, whatever you do. Oh, there it is. <laughs> So, with the weather coming, and we're on lap 54 out of 67, so 14 completed laps to go. Jamie Wincup has a half a second lead over Garth Tander. Michael Caruso is third. Craig Lowndes is fourth. Jason Bright, who's got back-end speed and fresher tyres, is fifth. Shane Van Gisbergen is sixth. Greg Murphy started 28th, is seventh. And it could have been higher had he not got held up in pit lane. Lee Holdsworth is ninth, uh, eighth, Stevie Johnson ninth, and James Moffat, his teammate, in tenth spot after starting 17th. So a bit of lightning in the background there on that previous shot as well. So now it's going to be a question of uh, not only tyre life, but as I said a little earlier, you know, will they get away with this in terms of the weather? Actually, I think we've been a bit lucky because the forecast had water arriving a lot earlier than this. We've, we had a little sprinkle in one or two of the support races, but um, I thought we'd be in for a much wetter day. They said the world was going to end yesterday. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You're all OK. Uh, and Craig Lowndes is complaining of a problem with the gearbox in his car. And Jason Bright is right behind. He's only three tenths of a second behind. Craig Lowndes now. So that is for fourth position. Bright looming onto the back. So this is the battle for the lead. Wink up, there he is. Wink up, Tanda and Caruso. And Lowndes being attacked by Jason Bright. And he'll get this done. Bright's got good speed. He's got the youngest tyres of the lot. And he's had good speed all day. He's driven the car well, nice and smooth. Does the crisscross. But he's going to be on the outside at the next corner. We'll have to just be a little bit patient and get this done at the next corner. Turns back the inside of Lowndes and does it. Well done. That was all textbook stuff and did a very good job of it. Both of them handled that very well. So Bright now, position four. There's the situation on the Bureau radar in this region. And uh, certainly they'll be copying pretty heavy rainfall and some isolated thunderstorms in and around various parts in this area but right at the moment just slightly to the north of Benella in Victoria we are getting away with it just look at that that's ugly isn't it <laughs> so 12 12 laps to go it that looks even worse out. from there yeah. just what you want to see too it give you a bit of uh, extra pep in your step though let's get this race over and done with quickly because we, we know it's coming so we're talking about track position through the day and we've spoken about strategy a lot. We've seen Greg Murphy with a real win from 28th to 7th at the moment. But Mark Winterbottom started off pole position and he is 17th. So 16 spots he's lost through the course of the day. It's a fall from grace, isn't it, Larko? Can you add? Old dynamic happening down here on pit lane. Usually everyone's in the garage looking at their computer screens and of course the radar monitor because this thing is so close above us on pit lane here that everyone's out on the pit lane fringe. It's a little bit hilarious. All the science in the world don't matter for anything at the moment. <laughs> Not a matter of if, but a matter of when. As Jamie Wincup controls this race by just under a second from Garth Tander.
everything is closing in on race 11 of the championship. The weather closing in, check. Laps counting down, you got it. And a battle between Wing Cup and Tanda and Caruso is also going the distance. But Jason Bright is making a last minute charge. He's in fourth spot. He's got the freshest tyres out of the leading group and he's using them to great advantage. Hey boys, let's just do a little bit of math here. I've just seen the first set of wets have come out on pit lane. This cloud is literally sitting above us now. Uh, Scafie, what do you think? Wet versus dry around here, a slick tyre on a wet track. What, 15 seconds at a cost you a lap? Yeah, pr probably, mate. Right, so, what, three laps you'd need, given the pit lane entry and exit time? Yep. I tell you, you'd think about rolling the dice, wouldn't you? If you're running around in 10th spot. Ooh. Yeah, that's, <laughs> on, that's bold. Run. That's very bold. Like, I've made a career out of having the wrong tyre at the wrong time, so... <laughs> I'm not, I'm not making that decision, but as you said, it's a very, at the moment, it looks so dark out in the turn two, turn three area of this racetrack. Well, the biggest challenge would be staying on the circuit. Absolutely. And the thing that's been weird is just in the last couple of laps, Tander has lost a huge amount of ground on Wink Up. He was right behind him. He's now two and a half seconds back. Uh, Michael Caruso is only half a second behind. And as we just saw in the background of that shot, you said before, uh, he's two seconds a lap faster. Jason Bright per lap is absolutely, is one, yeah, sorry, 1.85 faster last lap. So he's almost two seconds and there he is. And Tanda's tyres are uh, a little scoring. younger than Caruso's, interestingly. So that's a balance issue, isn't it? Yep. So the car just has eaten the rear tyres. You'd think, if anything, it'd be more likely Michael that'd be struggling. So Bright's the one to watch in terms of charging on lap 60 out of 67. Van Gisberg and Lowndes continue their little battle, fifth and sixth, and maybe Shane, not this time, won't get up to fifth, down to turn 10. And Shane's tyres are three laps younger than Craig's. So he's trying to put those to good use. It's crisscrossing, diving everywhere. So we'll give you some lap times because this will be a very interesting final six or seven laps. As the leaders go by, Wink Cup at 27.08, Tanda at 27.19, Caruso 27.34, Bright 25.29. Again, almost two seconds. Lowndes 26.9, Van Gisbergen 26.7. So again, almost two seconds. Bright now is only five seconds behind Wink Cup. But really importantly, to get onto the podium, he's only two seconds away from Michael Caruso. At the closing rate that he's got at the moment, uh, you know, mathematically he's half a chance, but the only problem is he's got to actually get around them. That's so right. Spends too many laps trying to thread that needle. That might be what hurts him. So it could be track position in the end that doesn't work in favour. There's the leader off in the distance at uh, just exiting turn eight. So he's now, he'll be able to see glimpses of Jamie. He'll know where Jamie is and he'll be sensing his reference to the leader as well as the information oh. he gets. Oh, is that a problem with the tyre rubbing on the guard there? On the when, when he was actually bumped up on the kerb, kerb, that's what happened. It was at the previous corner at turn 80, bumped the kerb with lock on mm. and it's grabbed the guard. So ah, Now Bright's just said on the radio, I don't have a cool suit and this is hard work and you, I could pick from his voice that he's, uh, he's he was huffing and puffing. So he's all over Caruso, but um, he's doing it tough. You might think that on a cool day like today, they don't need the cool suit, but the cockpit temperatures are extreme. And just use your head because you've got to, got to line this up. He's done a really good job all day. Out of turn two, good run, and down the inside he'll go. At turn three, good manoeuvre, great pass. Is that having a rain up there? That looked really misty. Where we thought it was the darkest, it looked then like it was a bit of misty rain. So here comes Bright up to the back of Tanda for second position. This is an amazing charge from Jason Bright. He started in eighth. Throughout the pit stop shuffles, he's been put mid-pack and now fighting back with fresher tyres. He's exhausted in the cockpit without a cool suit and he's really putting together an extraordinary finish to this race. Now in third, lining up second. Remember we said when he came in on lap 47, watch him at the end of this tyre stint. There is evidence it's water, some spots of rain here and there. Well, the wind's changed too. 
The wind swung around more to the west, which will push that weather to us. And the wind's picked up. It's been coming from the northwest most of the day, and it's really swinging around. Look at those games. Yeah, Mark Dutton just told Jamie Wincup, you're going to have to get a wriggle on because Bright's coming and he's going to get Tanda. But I don't think anybody's got anything in reserve here. All it'll be is information for the sake of it. Well, Tanda will have to pull off a miracle to stop Bright from getting past. Yeah, look for him up at turn three again. He'll try and make a good exit, climbing the hill here at two. He'll set the car nicely through one, try and get a nice drive through here and repeat what we saw earlier. Here he goes, looking at three. Good job done. So corner exit speed on his side and he sneaks down the inside. Carbon copy move. Up to second he goes. Now within a lap and a half, he's going to be all over Jamie Wincup. This is a great performance. We saw in Perth, Jason Bright bring up Brad Jones' first win in 11 years. Jason Bright's first win for five years. And Courtney clearing all the traffic, doing the right thing, not interfering in the battle at all. Professional attitude, stepping out of the way as Bright picks up the pace here. Now he and Wincup, exactly the same time to the first timing intermediate, so maybe Jamie did have a little in reserve. Well, this is what Wincup is good at. We say it time and again, he's good at getting the message from the garage that he needs to get back on it, needs to get that advantage back. Oh, replay at turn three, three wide up there, doesn't work too well. Slade, Winterbottom and Reynolds. And there's more rain up there now, I've just heard. And it was 0.7 gain in the mid sector, that lap for Jason Bright. So the last four laps, Bright has a much better time than Jamie Wincup. He's got time to do it. Plenty of time to do it, in fact, because he's now coming up towards the rear of car 88 through turn two. But it's it's, it's patchy wet. Wincup has found a little bit of pace. Oh, gee, he almost went off the road then. You can hear tyre squeal in the background. And here he comes. Oh, big slide off turn four there for Bright. Right up on the exit of the curve. He used that exit curve as a bit of a motocross berm to catch the car. And if you run over the edge of it, there's a big, big sort of pothole off the back of the curb. He got the left-hand rear wheel caught and slid off that curb. Watch it again in replay. This is exactly what Mark's talking about. He went to the wrong side of the curb and ended up in that trench on the other side. Couldn't rest the car against it. Now, but it was lightning again in the background then. By the time that Bright gets to up the hill at two and the run to three, he's going to be on the attack with Wind Cup. This is a great drive. We flagged earlier that this may have worked for him by using the tyres in a different way, making sure that when he got to his last stint, he didn't have to ask as much of them as those he was racing. And the thing that makes it impressive is that he's had to do it through traffic. He lost all that track position to gain what he's got now underneath him. So he's had to fight his way back through the traffic and now it's genuine car speed. He might do it early. Good tyres and he's going to have a look. Don't Upper turn one, 225 k's an hour. Jason Bright takes the race lead in the dying laps and Brad Jones racing for the second time in as many events go nuts in the garage. Great job. That is great. Great to see one of the smaller teams prevailing here. Remember Bright's brilliant drive in Western Australia in that bittersweet weekend. <laughs> That's Jason Richards watching and enjoying every second of it. <laughs> Hear what he said? I know that guy, I know that guy. <laughs> Here it is, replay move on the outside into one. Jamie made it easy in the end, didn't want to get involved in a debate. He's got a points lead in the championship, which is important to preserve. And I wonder whether that was just one of those mind games too. I mean, he had the right opportunity, so he went for it. Wincup would have been thinking, I'm going to get attacked at turn three. Bright saw the opening and went for it straight away to just pull the ace out of the pack a little bit earlier. And now it's just a matter of holding on to the end. Now Caruso, who was right behind Tander, has lost a lot of ground. He's actually dropped back behind Van Gisbergen, who is now the lead Ford competitor in fourth position. So Bright, Winkup, Tander, Van Gisbergen, Caruso. Then Fabian Coulthard, good job today. Sixth, Lowndes, Johnson and Moffat. With Greg Murphy in 10th, that's your top 10. He can roll out of it now, Jason. Yeah, well, that's exactly what you should do. Yeah, particularly given that he's, uh, he's huffing and puffing from the failed cool suit.
passion from the audience at the climb out of turn two. That's where Jason's done some of his best work today. Gives you a sense of the sound and the sights of the V8 supercars climbing the hill there. It's actually quite steep when you walk it. Thirty-eight years of age. He's much fitter this year than he has been for a few years. Now to Bradley Jones Racing, as we know, Team BOC sponsorship on this car. More than 160 championship event starts. And as uh, Scafie mentioned, the win in WA was the first in quite a few years for Jason Bright. And this one will be just as sweet, given the team is based just a couple of hours up the road at Albury. So essentially, this is as local as you're going to get. So all that stuff we said earlier in the weekend about local test track and all the things has worked, it's worked for them. It's yeah. great. <laughs> he started eighth. He first came in on lap 25 and then pushed it out to lap 47. So the strategy has worked out brilliantly. But strategy only takes you so far. The driver's got to do the rest. And that's what Jason Bright has done here. He's rounded up some of the best in the business. And he's pushing away now for the final three Ks. Turn three. He made some moves there to get the race lead. Turn seven is another one where throughout the course of this race, he picked off a couple of contenders and he's really pulled away. 3.1 seconds clear of Jamie Wincup now. So in the end, he's done it with a comfortable margin. Exactly right, Matt. I was just about to say exactly the same thing. This is an emphatic victory when you can lead Wincup, who we saw do such a great job yesterday, by three and a half seconds. A very good performance from the team in terms of strategy and a great drive from Jason Bright. And we'll keep our eyes on third spot because Shane Van Gisbergen's having a pretty good charge at Garth Tander in a crack for the podium. But out the front, it's all this man. Again, countless laps around here. Jason Bright has won at Winton four times in his career, but not for quite a while. Back to 2006, you have to go to find a victory for this man at this track. Three weeks ago, they delivered a first for Bradley Jones Racing, and here they come again. These are bright days at Team BOC. Jason Bright, another win. Holds off Jamie Wincup. Tanda, third, holds out Shane Van Gisbergen. Fabian Coulthard in fifth spot after starting in 14th. And celebrations for both Jason Richards and Andrew Jones. We've documented the stories there. Michael Caruso, sixth. Craig Lount, seventh. Stephen Johnson, eighth. Congratulations, James Moffat, ninth. And Steve Owen rounds out your ten. Couple of happy guys down here, Brad Jones, Jason Richards, give him a hug there. Braddo, now if you tear up on me here, mate, if you tear up, I'm going to belt you. <laughs> mate, you're getting used to this very quickly, eh? Last time I teared up was when I was driving with you at Bathurst, I think. I never heard the end of it. Looks fantastic. You know, I, second race, you know, Brighty thinks that we'll probably win about six this year. And I went, well, you know, two I'd be happy with, Perth and Bathurst. So, you know, it's just fantastic. The guys have really put in a great job. Pit stops were great, you know, Team BOC. And, and you know, it's not a fluke. You know, we're going to do it, hopefully, week after week. Well, you know, every now and again, anyway. <laughs> You've garnished a lot of support, mate, and we're loving it. Well done. Fantastic. It's great. Thanks, Marco. <laughs> it's good to see the smile on Bradley's face. They put a lot of hard work into this and they're getting the rewards. And as I mentioned, they put the faith in the driver and he's delivered now two events in a row. So all Holden on the podium, Van Gisberg and the best of the Fords. Craig Lowndes suffered a little bit towards the end there in seventh. And Steve Owen comes from 25th position to inside the top 10. Good drive too from Greg Murphy. Could have been a whole lot better had it not been for a sloppy pit stop. But from 28th to 11th is a great save. And James Courtney's day of disaster, well, it's really going to hurt in terms of the championship. Smoke it up, Jason Bright. You've deserved it. 